Good morning, everyone. I am proud to announce uh, Jordan Peterson here, and uh, I am proud to announce the launch of uh, my brand new cryptocurrency, Peter Coin. Yay! <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all well. I see people saying that this is a game stream. I don't know if that's completely accurate. This is more like... I mean, it's technically interactive fiction, but it's primarily text-based. It's definitely a little bit stranger than... Uh, than your typical game. I've been looking forward to this game quite a bit. Uh, I've been saving it for a long time because I intended to stream it. But we uh, we already, goodness gracious, like, I... <laughs> okay, I have a little bit of a story for you guys. On Saturday, I am going to be playing Pulsar with Limes, Rev, Mike, and Hackerlink. Uh, all of us have gotten together. I, actually, you know what? I feel like... Limes just consistently, like, fucks with me as much as possible. So, Limes mentioned... So, we, we had... Um, we had Limes, Mike, and Rev, and we were thinking about a fifth, and Limes is like, oh, um, why don't I invite my friend Hackerling? And I... And I was like, okay, yeah. So Hackerling joins the group chat that I made to organize. And I ask Limes, have you... Okay, so I, I say hi to Hackerling and I ask, hey, Limes, have you um, briefed Hackerling on what we're going to be playing? And Limes says, here, you know what? I'll just read it. I said, has Limes briefed you? And then Hackerling said, somewhat, I know the synopsis. Then Limes clarifies and says, I, so I, I made the group name Space Jabronis. And so Limes said, I asked if she wanted to play Jabronis, 
That's what you wanted me to ask, right? And Hackerling said, Space jabronis. Then Lime said, My job is done. <laughs> this is not the first time that she has gone out of her way to be unhelpful. <laughs> I said, thank you, Limes, and she said, no problem, any time for you, my friend. <laughs> then I said, you do so much for me, Limes, like making work for me. To which she replied with a lone Limes dance. <laughs> this, this pretty well encapsulates my, <laughs> my friendship with Limes. I, I don't think I will ever forget... Like, begging Limes for help when Mike was being weird and Limes just saying, eat asshole. It's, maybe it's what I deserve. Ow. Don't you hate it when eyelashes fall in your eye at the most inopportune times? Then again, is there ever an opportune time for an eyelash to fall into your eye? Like, when are you not using your eyes? If you're a sighted person. Ugh. I'm okay. I'm okay. Now, another thing that I'm a little bit worried about... Well, I'm not, I wasn't worried about, <laughs> about Pulsar. Um, one thing that I am a little bit worried about is I'm looking at my bitrate, and it is going absolutely wild since I updated OBS. Uh, and I know that we needed to update OBS because um, there are some changes going on on Twitch's, on Twitch's back end that we need to update OBS for. And I'm looking at the bitrate, and it's going crazy. So if if things start going bad on stream, please let me know. Because I'm probably not going to know otherwise. The new OBS has been a complete mess. I My understanding is that we have to upgrade, though. Like, I was just leaving it as it was because it was working great. Why update it and be worried about things breaking? But... Now they're like Twitch is making changes to their back end and, and OBS has to keep up. So I have to update and uh, getting a little bit of stuttering. Yeah, Twitch API changes. How are we looking? It's fine for me. Yeah, if please let me know if you're getting stuttering. OK, you know, this is so weird. I'm looking at the bit rate and now it's completely flat. Like, it's fine now. Twitch be wildin'. You okay, Twitch? Man, look after yourself. <laughs> we have a ton of subs. In fact, the hype train just ended. So first, we have Fat Jokes Are Lame, who has been subbed for four months, and they use the, the one message they get a month to say... Who you gonna love? Who you gonna hate? Who you gonna froggy? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I hope that you are happy with your usage of your sub message. Reverend Joe has been subbed for a year now. I've only been streaming regularly for two months and Reverend Joe has just been around. Thank you so much. They say, glad you've been streaming regularly again, even if you stream or write when I usually write. <laughs> I, I hope that I can keep you company while you're writing. Pimp Master Stallion has been subbed for half a year. And they say, wow, six months already. I'm glad I have been able to spend this time with you guys and Fred. Keep it up, my favorite documentarian. Aw, shucks. Although... Uh, I am going to call you out here and say, if you have um, a favorite documentarian, you might be a loser. No, I'm, I'm just teasing. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm just teasing. Thank you so much. Got him. <laughs> Chat revolts. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm the person over here, like... We're, we're all, we're all some degree, I, okay, I think that loser is what boring people call interesting people, 
a lot of the time. <laughs> because think about the people that are called a loser, right? It's like people who are very interested in a particular thing. <laughs> it's like, fuck it. I'm having a good time. But doctor, says Fred, I am a documentarian. <laughs> Go see the famous clown. Pyros... Pyrociter? Pyro... Pyrociter. Py... Py... Hmm. Hmm. Py... Pyrociter. Py... Pyrocity. Pyrociter 92 has been subbed for a couple of months now. Thank you. And they say, A bean is the seed of one of several genera of the flowering plant family Fa... Fabaceae. Fabaceae. Fa... fa uh, which are used as vegetables for human or animal food. They can be cooked in many different ways, including boiling, frying, and baking, and are used in many traditional... Do Thank you. And Bathtoon Tradu has now been subbed for two months as well, and they are using their sub message to say, Wise woman. You know what? Why should I do it myself? Wise woman, wise woman, wise woman sitting here. Wise woman, wise woman, wise woman here. Wise woman, young woman, nestling me at her breast. Wise woman, young woman, giving me... <laughs> uh, wise... I, I, you know what I think does it for me? It's that bend on that first note. It's the... Like, she knows that she can't find the first note, so she bends into it. That, that's, that's a pretty common thing for... um inexperienced vocalist to do wise woman wise woman <laughs> trad wife energy <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> oh god oh my god and we have <laughs> we have more american classic 19 has been subbed for two months and they say that they're here for the meat Man, can can I just point out how memey the ogres are? Ogres, my lord. <laughs> In Total Warhammer 3, literally the advisor comes up and he convinces the ogres to go and hunt the god bear because like so they can eat its meat just just cuz like cuz it it sounds tasty. We'll get to the meat. Don't you worry, we'll get to the meat. Um, man, I've, man, I, I'm going to be playing, I mean, is it really a game? You could technically say it's a game. More like interactive fiction. That feels, I don't know. I, I, I have not played that which faith demands yet. I have been very, very excited for it. You're the reason I randomly sing that song to myself while making popcorn. <laughs> What was it? Um, the for a few days actually last week, I could not stop. Um, oh, what what song was it? Um, it was right. It was I wanna be like daddy. I wanna be like daddy. Cause if I grow up to be just like daddy, then my daddy will be pleased with me. <laughs> I could not stop singing that to myself. It was the worst thing. Oh. I, <laughs> I I hate like but that's the point. That that's the point of um of those songs, right? They're supposed to be catchy for children. It's Twitter has ruined the word daddy. You ruin the word daddy by following the accounts that use the word daddy like that. <laughs> I think you might have just outed yourself. <laughs> you, 
You don't have a bad singing voice? I was in choir all through middle and high school. Hmm. Still doing sippy. <laughs> Ramble. <laughs> instead, instead of denying it, just does a lol. It's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, why don't we get started on this uh, on this game, on that which faith demands. Again, calling it a game. So, uh, some, something I wanted to mention. Um, I wasn't planning on streaming this today originally, but yesterday I saw that this game is on sale. And so I wanted to play it for all of you so that you all could see it. And if you're interested in it, it will be on sale for a few hours after stream ends. So, yeah, just I, I, I figured that I could do that for all of you. Let me see. Let's go ahead and launch this. I, I did launch it last night to make sure that it ran OK. And I... Um, and I also balance the audio. So the audio should be good. What horrors do I have for you now? Um, you'll find out. I, I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm very excited to find out. All right. If I, if I miss a sub or something, please yell at me, by the way. Because <laughs> I might just get very into this game. Now, let me go ahead and set up the scene real quick first. Game capture. Boom. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Ha. It works. I want to be like Danny. I want to be like Danny. Okay, we're good. Shall we start? Oh, yeah, by the way, this game does have content warnings. Uh, oh, ooh, ooh, uh, hold on. Oh, the sounds all reset. How's that? Uh, better? Better. Is that good? That, that sound good? If it's a little loud, please let me know. Uh, we'll bring it down just a little bit more. Haha. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Content warnings. Yeah, I, I just went back over because it was very, very loud. So gore, medical horror, needles, surgery, trauma, drowning, war and related imagery, body horror. I mean, we're going to be harvesting meat from a mech. I feel like if you don't know that there's going to be body horror, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> I mean, you're on my stream. If you don't know there's going to be body horror, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoop myself just a little bit. There we go. Uh, we up, up. Eh, that's good. Okay, that should be fine. There may be some meat. And being buried alive. Great. Yeah. Let's begin. Uh, I think a lot of the text is going to be on the left side, so I am going to move myself over. There we go. That should be good. And we can adjust things as needs be. Mm, where do I go? Where do I go? I might need to just make myself smaller. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make myself smaller and go over here. My son, the innumerable creator said to their child, we have given them shape. They owe us their faith. They are our vessels in the world we created. Music's a little bit loud. Shit. It reset again, God damn it. Wait. Oh, there we go. Good music, though. There we go. I have not seen Eva. I know. I know that might be hard to believe, but I just haven't. 
My son, the innumerable creator said to their child, we have given them shape. They owe us their faith. They are our vessels in the world we created. No, my most honored creator said their child, we owe our strength to their faith. For as we have created them, they have created our legacy. They have been our vessels, and someday we shall be the same for them. I will be no mortal's vessel, said the sublime creator. Then you shall die, answered Norail, light of the gods, the first emir. And I shall cast myself out of heaven to bestow my light upon those who have given me that which faith demands. Excerpt from Azam 102, The Pact of Heaven, or... Norail on servitude. You must die! <laughs> God damn it. And God said, My creations are to be loved, for my love is infinite. My people are to prosper, for I made the universe out of my love for them. My believers are the promised children, for they are to whom this world belongs. And God said, Beware my imposters, for their hate is endless. Beware the children of the false, for they shall envy your blessings. Beware those who would take that which was promised to you. Do not give your glory to the impure. Do not fall to lying tongues, and you will be rewarded with that which faith demands. Wait, what's happening? Why, why are oh beware of my imposters god damn it you guys i can't take you anywhere the holy scriptures of zara book one verse seven four wake ah i'm awake now the halls of the extraction company's station are dimly lit and grimy worn posters depicting advertisements for products twice your age are plastered to the wall edges torn and peeling the room is lined with chairs, and two rows facing away from each other form an island in the center. Five other interviewees are dispersed throughout the chairs. No one is sitting next to each other, no one is speaking, and one of them looks like they're asleep. The interviewer's door opens with a groan, followed by the familiar call for the next applicant. I, I, my experience with this sort of chair setup is dentist's office. <laughs> Oh, you'd be a great D&D DM? Thank you. I, it is, I have a friend who does a lot of tabletop sessions and he named me um, his favorite GM, which is one of the highest pieces of praise I have ever received. Applicant 0592, the interviewer intones, her eyes lifting from her clipboard to, the ser to search the room. She's met with silence. Applicant 0592, she repeats, louder this time, attempting to wake the sleeping person in the corner. Silence. She sighs. All right, then, how about... She scans her clipboard, flipping through pages and crossing things out seemingly at random. Applicant 0641, she declares, surveying the room once more. You check your application materials. You check your application materials. That's you. You stand up abruptly. Um, that's me, you say. Okay, follow me. You enter her office. Her office is as dimly lit as the rest of the station, but compared to the waiting room, it appears downright sterile. It's sparsely decorated with a few shelves filled with paperwork and a plain desk littered with writing utensils. A wide window spans the wall behind her desk. Waves of cosmic dust and celestial garbage unfurl outside. She takes a seat behind the desk and gestures for you to sit in the chair opposite her. I'm like, I'm, I'm digging this so far. Even just the opening. Aha. You sit. Hello, applicant 0641. This interview is basically just a formality for our records. There's probably no wrong answer and we just want to know who's going to sue us if shit goes south while you work for us. All right. Let's go ahead and start with the basics. She flips to a new page on her clipboard and uncaps a pen. I understand that you're currently displaced like most of our applicants. 
Where are you from originally? Uh, Rorikstead. I'm, I'm from Rorikstead. <laughs> so we have the Sabik Empire, the state of Zera, or... That's a loaded question. <laughs> I love the UI, by the way. This is awesome. Uh, that feels like a loaded question, right? Who wouldn't go for three? P part of, um... Yeah, a Nord's last thoughts should be of home. Um, that kind of turned into a Dumbledore in the end there. A Nord's last thoughts should be of his beans. I, I'm gonna, I, I don't know what the Sabik Empire, the state of Zera are. Uh, so I'm gonna say that's a loaded question. That's a loaded question, you say. I don't need specifics, nor do I really care. What I need to know is whose territory you were in before you got displaced, and what politics you're running from. You deflate. She's not here for your identity crisis, which is fair. Let's try that again. Where are you from? Uh, we're gonna say the Sabik Empire. I, because I don't know what either of these is. The Sabik Empire, you say. She nods, noting your response. I see. And did you serve the Sabik Empire in the war? The war? Okay, we're getting lore. Uh, did we? I'm going to say... No, we didn't. You shake your head. No, I didn't. She jots this down in her notes. What kind of work did you do then? Ooh. Janitorial, mechanical, or I was in the clergy. Ooh. That sounds like it... I, I actually, I want to go clergy because I wonder if this is going to give us cool options that would let us learn about the religions in, um, in this... Yeah, pe yeah, people are also saying clergy. Yeah. I was in the clergy. I was a member of the clergy back in the Sabik Empire. You okay, so this is just the answer you chose. Um, I was a member of the clergy back in the Sabik Empire, you say. Um, oh, clergy, you say. Her brow wrinkles and she looks up at you from her notes. You nod. Yes, that's right. I served at the temple of Adrahel. Adharel. Ah. Funny names. I served at the temple of Ad Adharel. It's pronounced clergy? Really? I'm gonna check this. Clergy. Get fucked. <laughs> no, I'm lying. <laughs> Uh, she winces and sets down her clipboard, as though indicating this to be off the record. You know what job it is that you're applying for, right? Are you sure that this is the right fit for you? Ooh. Ooh. Excuse me, it's pronounced Chuji. <laughs> you know what? Rather than, so, ra rather than just kind of resigning ourselves to it, let's say my faith won't be a problem. My faith won't be a problem. You say this with a confidence you didn't know you had. A year ago, you wouldn't have thought yourself capable of this. But scavengers can be made of anyone. She sighs and picks her notes up. Alright, just so we're clear anyway, what kind of work did you do at the temple? Were you just praying all day or ooh I I'm gonna say historian because maybe our main character will uh, will share some bits of history with us I was somewhat of a historian you say I was responsible for a lot of the bookkeeping at the temple as well as research and artifact provenance for the temple elders it sounds like you were rather dedicated to your faith then that's odd considering you left you scratch the back of your neck as she makes a note on her clipboard. So, what made you leave your temple? Something happened. She raised her eye she raises her eyebrows. Something happened. How ominous. Let's say I lost my home because I I think that'll reveal a little a little bit more about the war. I lost my home. My home was destroyed in a battle, you say simply. Numbly, as though the very thought doesn't fill you with grief at every moment. 
It's interesting how devastated devastating something can be to one person while another can be completely desensitized. Your theory is proven correct when your interviewer says, I'm sorry, I wish you were the first person I'd heard that from today. You nod, saying nothing. She continues, hesitant. For what it's worth, I lost mine too. So I get having to throw yourself into work to distract yourself, to find other stuff to focus on. Correct her. Ooh, interesting. Hey, Robert Cop, thank you so much for the sub. Oh my God, you guys, you know what we've totally forgot to do? I cannot believe that we didn't do this. Think about them beans. I mean, we didn't we didn't welcome any any new sub to the bonus bean room. That kind of shows how sedentary I am right now. We we got to make up for this. It looks like you get Thank you very much. I say we correct her. I want to see what that does. This isn't a distraction, if only it were so. You're interviewing because you have no other option, no feasible way of living without a steady paycheck. And if you happen to be working a high-risk, low-reward job in hopes of joining your family via a terrible accident, well, that's not exactly a distraction either. That's just lucky. No, I'm not trying to... This isn't a distraction. This is a necessity, you say. Oh. There's an uneasy silence as she makes a point to study her clipboard. You stare out the window behind her head. After a tense minute, she clears her throat. So that just about covers everything, she says. She scribbles something at the bottom of her notes and sets her pen down with an air of finality. She then rips the notes off of the clipboard and shoves them into a file brimming with what you assume to be other applicant notes. After closing the file, she stands and sighs, rolling her shoulders. You hear her joints crack slightly. Right. Well, you've got the job. Obviously. We take literally anyone. She digs through a desk drawer and hands you what she finds. I made a person with with really shitty luck. That's literally the only option. <laughs> it's, I don't think anyone takes this job because life is going well. That's the impression that I'm getting. You take it. It's a thin plastic card with an ID number and a barcode. The shuttle to the new crash site leaves in 15 minutes. Your supervisor's name is Maya and you'll be on site with two others. Your interviewer gives you a small, tired smile. Thanks for signing up for extractions. Ah shit, that's not the line, hold on. She tilts her head to the side and trills in a sarcastically peppy voice. Thanks for joining the Ikor Extractions Incorporated family. We're excited to have you. <laughs> Everyone knows. After finishing the formalities, your interviewer directs you to the shuttle bay, where you'll meet, your, meet the team and go straight to work. Your supervisor stands at the head of the shuttle bay, one hand on her hip and the other swiping through the hologram from her visor. She barely looks at you when you enter. Welcome to the team, kid. Shuttle will be departing in T-minus ten minutes. Bored now unless you have pressing matters to attend to. Uh... Do we just board the shuttle? I I'm gonna say we just board the shuttle. You nod in acknowledgement and board the shuttle. The shuttle interior is standard as far as shuttles go. The upholstery has seen better days, and the stench of sweat and motor oil is barely masked by aggressively citrus air freshener wafting through the vents. After a short wait, your supervisor is the last aboard. She looks around the cabin. Spades, Dobby, and Orion. She murmurs to herself, flicking at an unseen interface being projected from her visor. You're guessing those to be the names of your new co-workers. You examine the figure in the corner, the person staring out the window, the person talking to the supervisor, or I stare out the window. Let's examine the person in, in the corner. Keep an eye on them. <laughs> 
The figure in the corner is slouched. I love this art, by the way. Anyone else really digging the art? The figure in the corner is slouched against the wall with one foot propped up on the chair next to them. They're dressed in a mixture of ill-fitting cargo gear and an assortment of colorful fabrics that look as delicate as they do gaudy. <laughs> their face is obscured by the hood of their industrial standard coat. They're splayed out, flicking through a tabloid magazine and whistling a bizarre tune. Leave them be. Interesting. Uh, let's look at the person staring out the window. The person staring out the windows is thin and lanky, with a brace on their right leg. They have short, scruffy brown hair and restless energy apparent in how they tap their fingers on the seat impatiently. They're wearing what looks to be casual wear branded with motifs of the Zarin military. They catch your gaze and peer at you curiously. I'm very interested in these characters already. The person conversing quietly with your supervisor is tall and broad, but hunched over their legs in their seat as though trying to take up less space. They have choppy hair in hues of red and brown. Metal piercings wink at you at various intervals across their dark skin. Their posture is made broader by a bulky coat that looks as world-weary as the person wearing it. It doesn't look like you'll be able to talk to them right now. Not all construction work is equally enjoyable. For example, enlarging a drilled hole is boring, but fastening pieces of me metal together is riveting. It looks like you get to visit the bonus beam room. The, bo the bonus get fucked room. I, I meant to press a different button on my stream deck, but I forgot that I was on the screen that had nothing but beans. I'm, I'm gonna level with you. <laughs> I was supposed to do this. The, the best part about that is because I forgot to go back to my normal menu, there was no correct option. Any option except for one little corner would have given beans. So, uh, congratulations on accidentally becoming a member of the bonus bean room. <laughs> Whoops, all beans. Doesn't look like you'll be able to talk to them right now. Outside the shuttle, stardust and debris float, fl float aimlessly. You see the remnants of battleships and satellites littering the space just shy of the atmosphere. As you near the excavation site, you start to make out the shape of the wreckage. The mech carcass lies prone on the ground, reclining almost peacefully, save for the fact that its rightmost limbs have been annihilated beyond repair. Ooh, multiple limbs. The shuttle begins to descend. The shuttle descends awkwardly, shuddering from the weight of years of use and subpar upkeeping. Upon landing, the doors retract and a metal ramp pieces itself together, leading to the outside. I, I don't want to be on a shuttle, a, a space shuttle, with subpar upkeeping. You and your crew exit the ship. Your supervisor takes a canister out from her utility belt. Before you can discern what it is, an ear-splitting horn echoes across the wreckage. Her voice follows after in a commanding tone, amplified by a speaker in her visor. This site and the surrounding square acre are under the ownership and jurisdiction of Ikor Extractions Incorporated. Any trespassers, looters, or obnoxious entities will be swiftly dealt with. You wince at the noise. Your new co-workers are unfazed. Whoa, I didn't realize that they had bought the site. That's helpful, says Orion. Spade scoffs. They didn't. She's just trying to clear the rats out. Oh. Maya ignores them both, keeping a stern eye on the wreckage and waiting for the stragglers to vacate. As the last disappears, she turns back to the group. Alright, here's the deal. We have exactly one day to try and clear this site of any valuables. Anything that can be repurposed, resold, or reused is fair game. If I catch you stealing on the job, kiss your paycheck goodbye. We have our union-mandated lunch break in T-minus six hours, so meet back at the shuttle for your rations. Any questions? Dubby sticks his hand in the air. She ignores him. <laughs> oh, what kind of stuff should we avoid? Ooh. 
Yeah, that's it. That, there's a union? <laughs> what kind of stuff should we avoid? This makes her pause. Huh. Good question. You wait for her to continue. She doesn't. You try again. Is there anything we should avoid? She thinks about it. Then, yeah, probably. Try not to touch anything that looks like it might explode if you move it. Unless it looks valuable. And then we'll get the crane here. Next. Is it safe to be here? She huffs a snort. No. Next question. There's a union? No, corporate just tells us to say that so no one tries to start shit, she says briskly. <laughs> no one usually sticks around long enough to unionize anyway. Anything else? You open your mouth to ask if that's allowed legally, but you catch sight of spades shaking their head at you. You decide not to press it further. This is... <laughs> Oh, this game is awesome so far. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying the writing. You stay silent. She eyes the rest of the crew critically before saying, Well, in that case, get at it. I'll alert you all when it's time for lunch, all right? You nod at her before stepping further into the wreckage. You arrive at the legs of the mech. The legs of the dead god lay prone across the wreckage, bent loosely and in a way that almost looks as though the mech is lounging on the ground. The lower half of the right leg is almost entirely gone, and by extent is impossible to salvage. The left leg and right thigh look as though they may have resources worth saving. You see a good amount of armor still intact, implying a good chance of more delicate material still preserved underneath. Debi is also here. Your supervisor is here as well. Uh, I think that we should talk to our uh, co-workers real quick. Or you know what, let's, let's investigate the leg first. You investigate the right leg. The lower right leg has been almost entirely destroyed, but the thigh of the mech doesn't look as bad as you expected. As you examine it with a critical eye, you see that the joint where the kneecap would be is partially open, frayed wires and muscles splayed out from within. Meat mech, meat mech, meat mech, meat mech. If you're careful, you can probably find some wires deeper within that are undamaged by the blast. You duck under the armor. Beneath the armor of the blasted leg, dim lights pulsate around the interior bone. The muscles here are frayed and likely not worth uh, frayed, are li and likely not worth saving. But the bone of the thigh lo is um, thigh looks cracked but intact. Some of the cartilage that connected the lower bone to the knee has been destroyed. You easily locate the articular hatch. The cartilage protecting it has disintegrated, so you'll probably just need a crowbar or a good angle to leverage the hatch open. You grab a stray pipe hanging loosely from the top of the leg interior. You're not really sure what it was for, but you don't need to. All you need it to be right now is leverage. Mech, thought, mech legs and thighs and... Feet. Stop. <laughs> Reject Evangelion return to Nausicaa. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, for anyone who's just coming in, this is a game, it, it's an interactive narrative where you uh, salvage a meat mech made from a god. Salvage the weenus. <laughs> Good. Uh, careful to avoid cutting yourself on the broken metal, you ease the pipe between the hatch and the bone proper. You pry the hatch open as gently as possible. Inside the articular hatch, you see the wires glisten like veins. They're sectioned off in bundles running along a metal shaft that takes up the space that Bone Marrow once occupied. Ooh, once occupied. So what, these bodies have been hollowed out? Detaching them from the shaft should be easy, but you'll have to go deeper in to remove them with minimal damage. It might be faster to just cut the wires off here. Uh, let's go deeper. It makes more sense to go deeper and to remove the wiring. You'll have to go further up the bone, but you can evaluate the structure while you do. 
It's less efficient, but it will pay off. You back away from the access point, gently closing the hatch before tra traversing further through the hollow leg of the mech. The muscles of the corpse form a stiff padding. Uh, as you walk, you see well-worn in indent. Wait, wait. I think they meant indentations, indentations and railing installed, indicating the paths that me mechanics must have taken when the mech was being maintained. You reach the pelvis of the mech. You reach the pelvis of the mech and see where the wires connect to the spine. With a bit of effort, you're able to unplug and detach them from the central shaft. Nobody say anything like shaft. After successfully unplugging them, you begin to roll the wires up in a bundle as you make your way back down the leg. It takes a bit of time, but you're rewarded with meticulously harvested wires that are sure to garner some profit. As suddenly as you had left, you find yourself back in the remnants of the legs, clutching the wires so tight you feel your pulse. Your grip immediately slackens when you regain awareness. You push the conver- Wait. Wait, what? You push the conversation to the back of your mind, do your best to resume working. What conversation? I think I missed it. You travel further along the bone to a sizable distance from your starting point, make a quick incision to sever the wires completely and leave the mech. Outside the legs, you see a rack of bundled wires that have already been harvested by the rest of your team. You hang yours and finish up. Oh, yeah. Wonder if it's been blotted out. Yeah. You hang yours and finish up. The legs of the dead god lay prone across the wreckage, bent loosely and in a way that almost looks as though the mech is lounging on the ground. Uh, yeah, so we've already seen this. Oh, looks like the, the other person is gone. I wonder if we'll meet up with them again. Referring to the earlier conversation about unsafe working conditions. Yeah, maybe. Um, let's dismantle the armor. You start to dismantle the armor. The left leg's armor is still intact, and with some elbow grease, you'll be able to preserve enough of it to reuse. Well, maybe a lot of elbow grease. Might need some help with this. Uh, oh, my supervisor is here. Yeah, I'll ask if she'll help. Hey, Maya, you call out. I'll need a hand with this. She looks up from her own task to see you struggling to pry a hunk of metal off of the fallen corpse. All right, give me a sec. Cool, she's helpful. She turns her visor off and strides over to you. Jeez, lift with your legs, kid. You'll hurt your back like this. Aw, she kind of cares, right? Like, she's act she, wants to <laughs> she doesn't want you to hurt yourself. Your supervisor continues to instruct you as you work together to remove the armor. The two of you alternate between holding the thick metal aloft and squeezing beneath to, to dislodge the armor from joints and screws. You can handle the rest from here. She claps you on the back as she leaves. You do your best not to wince. You find neatly organized piles of scrap metal and armor near the shuttle, likely your supervisor is doing. You sort your scraps as best you can. All right, while we're back. Ooh, oh, we can take apart the muscles. You guys ready for the meat? You guys ready for the meat? I think it's meat time. Hey, meat. You take apart the muscles. Beneath the armor of the legs lay inhuman, immaculate muscles wrapped around the bones of the god. They're a dark blue, gleaming with the opalescence of an oil spill in the light. You can see that in places they've been augmented and stitched together with machine-like precision, likely from old wounds in previous conflicts. By contrast, the sinew is pale and sickly, almost sterile compared to the oily colors of the muscle. It looks like the sinew at the knee has deteriorated a fair amount, meaning it will be easier to peel the muscles from the bone there. We've got the meat. We are the butcher shop. I'm 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 loving this so far. How are you all liking this? Cause I'm I'm fascinated. I want to learn more about the world. Um I hope we get more little bits. I hate that I just got hungry. Hey lightning! That's witch streamer. How you doing? You slide your hand under the frayed sinew. Uh, 
Uh, okay. You slide your hand under the frayed sinew and pull a utility knife from your belt. You cut through as cleanly as you can, careful not to fray the muscle any further. You feel a shuddering through your gloves. It's you, or it's what you're holding. You're acutely aware of the thin latex that separates you from the flesh of the divine. You feel your blood pulse through your fingers as easily as you feel the spasm that racks the strip of muscle in your hand. To the outside eye, the mech is wrecked and any life inside it has been extinguished, but the inside tells a different story. Wait a minute. We were a part of the clergy. We wish to be a part of it. Oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta feel up the meat, right guys? We gotta feel the meat. That Bowser's inside story. <laughs> I actually... No, I... I've seen footage of that game. I can't do it. It... it it, 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 I, I have a fear of being like consumed and inside a body. I, I can't do it. Even that game, I cannot do. I don't care how good the game is. I can't do it. I'm sorry. You take your glove off awkwardly, grabbing the edge of latex glove with your other hand clutching the chunk of flesh. As soon as you touch it to your bare skin, your vision blurs. An amber liquid rises around you, a wet embrace that warms your skin and makes your blood run cold. It reaches your chest, your chin, your nostrils, until finally you are submerged. You struggle to hold your breath until enough is enough, and you gasp out for air. Breathe. The bubbles leaving your lungs balloon into larger shapes, growing slowly and slowing their ascent. Rather than floating to the surface, the bubbles oscillate in front of you slowly. They bob up and down lazily, expanding and contracting as though they're breathing. Touch. You move your arm up towards the bubbles. The liquid around you is thick and viscous. It takes considerable effort to move within it. You stretch your fingers out to touch the bubble. Rather than popping, the impact sends lines spiraling out from your fingers. Rip. You flex your fingers with purpose, digging your nails into the bubble. You're guided by instinct over intent, something urging you to break this bubble and any evidence of your humanity. <laughs> Governor explosion. Ah, so this is how they harvest Pepsi. <laughs> ah, sweet, you guys. He, he just got submerged in amniotic ballast. <laughs> the bubbles had solidified somewhat since the air left your lungs, leaving some sort of skin on the exterior. Your nails tear through the membrane, and the air pockets quickly dissipate into smaller bubbles and rush toward an unseen surface. Breathe. That same instinctive voice guides you to breathe. There is no air. Breathe. You inhale tentatively and cough as the thick amber liquid pours through. Breathe. You shake your head vigorously, attempting to tell this instinct no. That proves to be a mistake. The lack of air paired with shaking your head leaves you dizzy. You feel your mind clouding. Breathe. You can't. Your vision fades. You feel yourself drifting to sleep. A voice as deep and boundless as the sky rings through your mind. Though the voice isn't loud, the impact of it rings through you and makes you stumble. Who are you? I'm a bitch. You don't really know how to answer that, nor do you understand who you'd be responding to. I'm no one important. We failed the meat merge. <laughs> 
I'm no one important, you say. I'm just passing by. Do not lie to me. I can sense it on you. You were immersed in it. Immersed in what? Belief, expectations, faith, power. Whichever you're, you choose to call it, you may lack it now, but it changed you once. None. You know what we experienced? You experienced it. I know you did. Power. <laughs> okay. <laughs> True power. You may lack it now, but it changed you once. No one is amused, immune to how they are perceived by others. Regardless, why are you here? I'm here for a job. I'm here for a job, you say. My crew and I are tasked with excavating the wreck site. We're here to salvage anything that can be reused or resold. I see. A scavenger. Here to pick my corpse like carrion. Have you no respect for the dead? No, it's not you attempt to defend yourself, but the voice cuts you off. How depraved the faithful become. How greedy. How merciless. Leave my body. Leave this place. Go. You are not welcome to my body. You welcome to mine. Hey. No. <laughs> what do you mean you don't like feathers? The voice grows in volume, decaying and distorting until you can no longer discern the words. You return to your surroundings. As suddenly as you had left, you find yourself back in the remnants of the legs, strips of muscles in your ungloved hand. <laughs> How depraved the Sigma male grind set. <laughs> My child returned to the path of the Alpha. You push the con the conversation to the back of your mind and do your best to resume working. You slowly- I think that this is where this is supposed to be. You slowly begin to peel the strips of muscle off the bone. They stick to the bone in places, but you're able- Okay, so I, I think that we saw that other one a little bit early. Well. By the end of the process, you have several yards worth of preserved muscle freshly cut and ready to be packaged. You wrap the strips and deposit them in a nearby storage container emblazoned with the Ikor Extractions Incorporated logo. Finish up. You return to the lower region of the mech. The legs of the dead god lay prone. Doo -doo -doo. The left leg looks to be stripped of everything usable. Orin is wandering around. Hi, Orin. Sup? He waves you over. Your co-worker is of a medium build and is close cropped to dark hair. His smile is crooked and framed by dark stubble. He beams at you and sticks a hand out for you to shake. <laughs> maybe, maybe be careful about what you touch from here on out. Welcome aboard. I'm Orion, former pilot of the Scorpion, the Scourge of Thuban, and one of the deadliest weapons in Zera's arsenal. You may have heard of her from such daring exploits, such as the Battle of Kalkyle's Throat, or the Skirmish of... What an introduction. You immediately tune out the majority of what he says. <laughs> Never heard of it, you say. He deflates slightly. Um, well, 
I suppose news of the board doesn't reach every corner of the galaxy. I didn't keep track of Zayrin vessels, no. He retracts his hand quickly as if stung. Excuse me? His friendly disposition has disappeared and been replaced by a cold wariness and tense posture. Oh, you're from the Empire, he says. Interesting. The way he says interesting, you may as well have been talking about a pile of rotting flesh. Not anymore. You say, I got displaced. If there was a place for me in the Empire, I'd still be there. He looks you up and down suspiciously. You barely resist the urge to roll your eyes. Listen, trust me when I say I don't have the time to start anything. I'm just here to do my job, all right? He eyes you dubiously. All right, but I'm watching you, he warns. You turn away just in time for him to miss you roll your eyes in earnest. <laughs> Maybe if I roll my eyes hard enough, he'll go away. <laughs> It hasn't worked with NFTs so far, but you know. <laughs> okay, well, hey everyone, it's that time. I've been doing a lot of reading today. So, it is very important not only for myself, but for all of you to get up, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, get yourself something to hydrate, and I'll see you all in just a few minutes. Stretch your muscles for when I harvest them.
Wait a minute. Do we have Devin chat and I haven't realized it? Is this Devin chat? We totally do have Devin chat. Gen code on, right? We have the real Devin here. Jen, I, <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't realize it earlier. I actually made a note in my head to check for your name and I just like didn't see you. But hi, I, I am loving your game so far. You know, um, I, in college, I studied interactive fiction. And so I, I'm very interested in this. Uh, in fact, I did independent study on it. It was, it was my literature. Um, I, I studied literature, but I uh, especially had a, a bit of a f independent focus. Um, I studied it under a professor. So I'm, so this is very, very interesting to me and I'm, I'm loving how you put it together so far. Oh, and Silent Tremor just gifted a sub to, to you as well. Congratulations. And of course, Congratulations on entering the bonus bean room. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. Now, I'm really enjoying it so far. So thank you for making it. Before we start again properly, I need to make one last little check. Aha, perfect. Oh, actually, she just messaged me with it. We're going to be checking out the uh, far-fetched pilot teaser at the end of the stream. We're going to keep playing for now. Pronouns are they, them. All right, perfect. I always just by default say they. It's, it's easier. <laughs> And I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, everyone, um, throw some beans on Gem and um, and give thanks for making this game. And again, um, for those of you who are coming in, the reason that I decided to play it today is because it's on sale. It's on sale for a few hours after the stream ends. Uh, it's on sale right now if you want to try it yourself. I'm really interested in um, how much changes based on our background, because so far that has been very, very impactful. Let's begin again, shall we? Ooh, there we go. The legs of the dead god lay prone across the wreckage, bent loosely and in a way, yep. Left legs look to be stripped. Who else is here? Nobody else is here. Let's... Ooh, okay. I'm very interested about, um, about the spine and the way that uh, information, the, like electrical impulses, moved along it. So definitely, let's check out the spine. Oh, it's your, it's your birthday sale. Happy birthday. <laughs> Oh, in that case, your game sucks. No, <laughs> no I'm teasing. Don't want to spoil things, but I'm happy to answer questions whenever. I want to just experience the game as it is. I've been looking forward to this for like, I think it's been a year actually, but I wanted to play it on stream and I kept intending to like start streaming again and then I didn't. So I just kept waiting. Probably going to finish this off stream. <laughs> Because I, I was so excited for it, but I also wanted to stream it, and I... Oh, it's bad. It's bad. And then I started streaming him earnestly. Does the game have music? Yeah. Can you not hear it? There. Is it too quiet? I tried to make sure it was loud enough. Where do I find the game? Uh, Timothy, why don't you go ahead and link the itch page? Is it the itch page? Yeah. 
It's on sale on itch.io. Timothy just linked it in chat. If you want to go and nab it for yourself. It's like two bucks twenty. Let's go investigate the base of the spine. It's good. Okay, good. You investigate the base of the spine. All that remains salvageable of the lower half of the corpse is its pelvis. From what you bet... Ha, that's what my last partner said. Ha ha ha. No. <laughs> From what you picked up on the ride over, the spine is one of the more valuable parts of a mech. It's important that your team salvages this before anyone else does. You access the spine through a panel that opens on the left thigh. The interior of the mech here is the least organic you've seen. Aside from the spine and a few key moments of muscle, this region of the mech has been heavily modified and converted into machinery. That's really interesting to me. You would think that, like, the meat of a god would be the most valuable part of a mech made out of the meat of a god, right? But that is clearly not the case here. That's, that, that's an interesting note for me. Music is by your friend Austin. Oh, um, sorry, I know that you're getting auto-censored because links are blocked in chat. Uh, can I give- can we give Jen permissions to post links? Is that a- is that an exception that we can make? Oh, permit. I just clicked a button that said permit. Or wait. Permit. Did that work? It did literally nothing. I'm the fool. <laughs> Look around. The spine itself is a glimmering off-white that dominates the space. Despite the low lighting of the emergency fluorescence, the bone glows with a pearlescent light that bathes the space in an almost dreamlike hue. The vertebrae that connects to the... To the to, the verte yeah, the vertebrae that connects to the pelvis is the size of the shuttle you traveled here in. You're unable to see the rest of the tunnel around the spine from here. It's sectioned off by a metal wall with a door. Ooh. We gotta go deeper. You enter the spine tunnel. Rather than traveling through the vertebrae, you instead find yourself beneath them on a walkway made out of metal grates. Some sections of the walkway have wider grates resembling the rungs of a ladder. Handrails run parallel and perpendicular to the spine, accounting for any human needs when maintaining the mech at various angles. The tunnel itself is a layered structure made of metal, sectioned off to match each vertebrae and intervertebral disc to prevent hindering the movement of the spine encased within. It isn't a perfectly level path as it follows the slope of the spine, but the tunnel looks to be a straight shot from the skull to the pelvis. Oh, we gotta, we, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, so no head? <laughs> you find yourself under the rib cage of the mech. The mech sustained a heavy blow to the chest, so it looks like you won't be able to exit through here without some serious heavy lifting. Let's see. I wonder... You know what? While we're here, let's look at the damage. You peer through a gap in the wreckage and see the exterior of the tunnel. The back muscles of the mech were carefully distanced from the bone by pylons, and another graded walkway lies suspended between them. Guardrails line the pylons, and hatches of emergency supplies lay in, but, and hatches of emergency supplies lay in intervals throughout the space. I'm starting to wonder, like, how, how is this piloted? Is it a single person? It seems like there's a whole team of people. It's incredible or it's terrifying. It's terrifying. It's grotesque. A prime example of how much humanity has warped the body of the god for the sake of war. You return. Let's go to the head. So head? <laughs> you are at the top of the spine where the vertebrae taper off to become the neck. Yeah, we gotta check it out. You find grappling equipment fastened to a guardrail near the top of the tunnel. 
The rope lies prone on the walkway, but you imagine that if the mech was standing, it would dangle down the length of the spine. Hmm. Yeah, leave the spine tunnel. Oh, we're at the head, baby. Ooh. Yeah, the head is... So the face is made of glass. I'm like getting invested in how this works. The head of the mech rests on the ground in line with its torso, refusing to turn or lean in any other direction. It's almost statuesque in its scale. You're pretty sure that the cockpit is here, somewhere protected by the armored helmet. Yeah, we gotta dismantle the helmet, right? You dismantle the helmet. The helmet wraps entirely around the mech's head. The armor here is plated thicker than in any other region of the mech, and an opaque glass spans the front-facing portion of the helmet. You're a bit surprised to see glass in the helmet. It seems to contradict the intensive protection that the rest of the helmet provides. Yeah, that's odd. You guys, literally the word cockpit is just... It... it really? <laughs> You didn't, you didn't make that joke when you were in first grade? You gotta get it out now? But that is interesting. I wonder why they used glass here. There's too many parts of the helmet to try and tackle at once, so it looks like you'll have to narrow your scope to salvaging s specific parts of it. Okay. Here's my argument. Salvage, so the armor probably is quite useful, but remember when they said that the, the, uh, the tech that was attached to the spine was even, like, was the most valuable part of the mech? Even more valuable than the flesh of a god? Yeah, we're going for the tech. You decide to salvage the technology of the helmet. It's delicate work, but more lucrative. There's definitely a market for intact cockpit hardware. However, you won't be able to access the technology from the outside. You'll have to go inside uh, the cockpit to extract it. You enter the cockpit. You find the hatch leading to the cockpit on the top of the mech's head, close to the ground thanks to it having fallen on its back. You climb inside and make your way to the cockpit. The cockpit is a stark difference to the rest of the mech. Where before you had been dissecting a corpse, here you find yourself wading through the ruins of an inhabited space. A home, even. Everything here is designed around the needs and wants of a person you've never met. Scraps of paper are pinned on the interior walls, and random knickknacks are strewn across the central console. So, this is really interesting to me. Did it always stay upright? Does it have uh, some sort of artificial gravity when it's running? I, like, there are so many questions. Board bordering the pilot's chair are two small consoles. They're deceptively organic looking and smooth to the touch, shiny white growth mimicking the glowing bones of the god. Yet unlike bone, they have thin seams that can be propped open and picked apart. Gimme gimme. You pry one open with a thin metal tool you were given in the shuttle bay. You have no idea what it was for, and frankly, you still don't. But it's the perfect size for extracting delicate technology. Circuit boards and wire in intestines lie within the console. You unplug and untangle what you can, careful to avoid pulling or prodding at anything too hard. After finishing the first console, you repeat your actions on the other. I'm... So the, the theming of the game so far has been, I think, pretty clear, but now it's starting to get complicated because we had the, the body of a god being utilized for war and they get, you know, that obviously we have the, um, like the, the, the core theme of that being, um, sort of the way that we mutilate faith, um, for war. Like, there, there are a lot of themes that we can dig into there, but that's um, one of them. But I feel like the themes have been straightforward, but now we have in the head of the mech a living space. Like, a, a, a place of comfort. That's... 
facet, like, okay, so it's, the themes are getting complicated now. You leave the cockpit. You deposit the last of the tech in a storage bin near the shuttle. But we're just here, so we're just here to dig it up, though. Living rent-free in your head, shut up. <laughs> you return to the head of the mech. Having harvested the tech from the helmet, there's not much else to scavenge here. The cockpit remains accessible. Can we enter the cockpit again? Yeah, there's not much. Uh, so the right arm has been completely destroyed. The left arm is going to have the good shit. You move to the left arm of the mech. This arm is mostly intact all the way down to its hand, but its weapon is nowhere to be found. The armor is well preserved, which means that there should be some worthwhile resources to find here. Dabi is also here. You hear Maya's air horn echo across the wreckage. Must be lunchtime. Oh god, we're running out of time! We're running out of time! The crew has gathered back near the shuttle. Your supervisor hands out corporate rations to each of you, starting with spades. Dabi and Orion are bickering to the side while Maya tries her best to ignore them both. Spade sits at the edge of the landing with their back against the shuttle. They've lifted their mask to eat. Let's, let's approach Spades. We haven't seen this guy yet. You approach Spades. They do not, I really like the art. Again, m mentioning that again. They do not look up and the music has like fit the atmosphere really well as well. Like th this all just this is really excellent. I'm 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 so glad that I was turned on to this game. They do not look up at you as you approach, but they dip their head in slight acknowledgement. Hey, spades, right? Hmm. They look up at you with mild confusion, like they hadn't expected you to speak. Yeah, that's me. Maya needs something. What? No, I just wanted to uh, introduce myself properly. No. Oh. Well, you already know my name, so you did my work for me. Uh, yeah. I wanted to greet you earlier, but you always look really busy. Sorry. Oh, it's no problem. I just try not to think too much when I'm working. The job is as rough as it is. I don't want to get on Maya's shit list by getting distracted. Fair enough. You haven't interacted too much with Maya yet, but you have a feeling she's made of sterner stuff than you anticipated. Anyway, welcome to the team. If you need a hand, I'm around. They offer a small smile before turning back to their food. Uh, I want to watch them fight. <laughs> Dabi and Orion are bickering. Yeah. You watch Dabi and Orion fight. You shift closer to Dabi and Orion, trying to listen to what they're talking about. They're arguing about a reality show you haven't heard of. It's an incredibly heated discussion. <laughs> It's, and I think that this is kind of what's disarming about this game is it's, it's personal. And I mean, I don't feel like that's a, a unique thing, but it, it's what, one of them was looking at, um, it was Orion. Orion was looking at um, a uh, tabloid newspaper and now they're arguing about uh, a reality show like it's it's just your basic person stuff you eat alone you sit to the side with your rations propping yourself up against a container of scrap metal as you eat you look over the wreckage site the mech lays still and from here you can see most of it all at once rather than a limb at a time you're used to seeing mechs as an omen, an indication of divine inter interference in combat, a symbol of victory, an angel of death. Here, all you see is a rotting corpse being picked apart. Death comes for everything, you suppose. Even gods. You finish eating. Alright, break's over. Back to it. You return to work. The, uh, this arm is mostly intact. Yep, so we're back at the... So we're at the halfway point. I, I think that we can finish this game. At least one run of it. I'm probably going to return to it in, in my, you know, what spare time I have. Um, I have very little time to myself nowadays. 
but but I would like I'd really like to return to this. Let's talk to Orion. We haven't gotten to know Orion at all. Or not Orion, not Orion. Sorry. Um it wasn't Orion. Um You know what? Ah, oh, I missed out on a chance to talk with him. Shit. Let's dismantle the armor. I, I thought I would have a chance to talk with him. Ah, okay. I ruined everything. I think it was Debi that uh, was reading the tabloid. I'm really... You guys, you have no idea how bad I am with names. It's... I, I, I could be interacting with someone for days. And then just forget their name. It's awful. It's It's so bad. Saw you in Shia's the other day. Yeah, Shia Bun was playing a game called Rabbit Hole, so I joined in to demand uh, royalties. <laughs> Unlike the right arm, this arm does not lie in pieces scattered across the ground. The armor is intact, which will sell for a good amount, but it's also too big to carry on your own without machine assistance. You'll need to get the crane to take care of it. You set up the portable beacon that signals crane usage by the elbow of the arm. While you wait for the crane to arrive, you examine the arm. It's in excellent shape, hardly damaged at all by the fall. The only oddity is the fact that the weapon is nowhere to be found. However, the armor being intact means that the crane won't be able to just lift the pieces on its own. You'll have to loosen the pieces yourself, or else the crane will lift the entire arm, bones and all. You loosen the external bolts holding the armor in place, moving from wrist to shoulder. It would probably go faster if you had an extra pair of hands, but it's not impossible to do alone. Damn! Just as you finish, the crane is lowered to the ground by the drone stored in the shuttle. Your work here is done. Best leave the heavy lifting to the machinery. We gotta harvest the flesh. We gotta. We gotta. Weird, weird amount of overlap between Mike Limes and Shia viewer. Um, I think I, I hang out with Mike a lot. Uh, Shia is kind of the weird overlap there, right? Although, you know, Shia is like, it makes the same category of jokes as Mike. We, guys, we gotta touch the flesh. Meat, 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 meat. After removing the armor, you're able to see the arm muscle in all their divine glory. They curl around the bones in an uncanny similarity to that of a human's, except these muscles are a deep blue and shimmer with a myriad of colors. You're able to see a few places where muscles were carefully pinned away from articular hatches in the bones, likely for maintenance purposes. I feel like manipulating the flesh of a god, and, I, and maybe this is what Gem was going for, but I feel like manipulating the bones, uh, or like the, the flesh of a god for maintenance purposes is just so dark. <laughs> oh, Ceres has been subbed for six months now. Thank you so much. And of course. It looks like you get to visit the bonus beam room. Two, two bits of music at the same time. Now that's not going to make everything worse. <laughs> you decide to start. I guess. I guess what it is is the m mundanity of moving the flesh of a god for maintenance purposes. A god. That's what's weird. It's. And what this game is doing is it's taking these beautiful, incredible, incredible divine things and then juxtaposing them with um, the mundane. You decide to start the process of stripping the muscles at the top of the arm, at the shoulder of the mech. You go to the shoulder of the mech. Here, the muscles deviate from their imitation of the human body. Where normally the deltoid muscles wrap to join the pectoral muscles of a human, the arm muscles are devoid of that connection. They have been carefully separated from each other and pinned in place, with artificial materials mimicking the fibrous nature of the remaining muscles. This is interesting to me, so this implies that the body was more human-like for a time. You think you know why, 
To alter the control a god has over its body, it would make sense for the mechanics to reroute the controls to the pilot rather than to the rest of the muscles. The artificial muscles glimmer with minuscule lines like soft circuitry. To alter the control a god has over its body. Yeah. So, like, the agency of the god has been removed. Reasoning aside, the artificial muscles look easier to cut than the muscle itself. It also saves you the trouble of having to separate the deltoid yourself. You start the incision by carefully cutting the artificial muscle with your utility knife. It's more flexible than sinew, and peeling it off of the arm muscle is as easy as removing a wrapped bandage. It gives easily. You discard the artificial muscle and move to cut the actual flesh. Reaching for where the muscles have been pinned, you slide your knife under it and cut. Decisively. If we're going to cut the flesh of a god, we have to be decisive. With a firm grip and a confident amount of, of pressure. For a moment, nothing happens. Then the wound starts to leak and drip down the muscle and pool at your feet. You look down. The liquid is an oily black and seeps around your feet like an ink spill. The wound gushes more of its ichor until you are waist deep in it. You feel it rise around you, mirrored by bile rising in your throat. You look at your hands. Your blade is clean, but your arms are drenched in the liquid up to your elbows. Do we get to talk with the god again? Blink. Your surroundings melt away, replaced by dark gradients that remind you of distant galaxies without their stars. The colors pulse and shift, furling toward and away from each other and dissipating upon collision. The dust drifts towards you. It looks duller up close. You guys? I'm gonna let you in on a little... A, a little... A bit of experience that I gained studying literature. Sometimes when you're reading a story, there is a single line that defines all of the themes in a very, very short spam. This is that line in That Which Faith Demands. This is the thesis, yeah. The dust drifts toward you. It looks duller up close. This might actually be the, like, even though it's metaphorical and doesn't have any specifics about the story, this might be the most important line of, of the game so far. You reach out to touch the clouds, the colors, the dust from the cosmic sandbox. Your arm moving sends a ripple throughout the space and you feel the impact displace the air around you. You grab a fistful of dust and crush it in your fist. You may not have created it, but it is yours to mold as you see fit. It is yours to destroy should you choose. And in this moment, you do. You take more and more of the dust into your hands, raising the vibrant world around you. You find comfort in your control over it. Make. The remnants of the world in your hand have been ground down into minuscule pieces. You open your fists slowly and allow them to float. You wonder if the amount of Bitcoin you paid for this acid was worth it. Tentative at first, the new colors are dull and do not stray far from where you release them. With a gentle push from your palm, you urge them towards each other before stepping back. You set the pieces in motion, but you want to see what happens next. With your encouragement, the new colors drift toward each other and cautiously intermingle. It starts slow, so the creation of a universe, right? <laughs> and not a powerful god, but a curious god. 
a destructive and creative god, but not a guiding god. So this is a, a sort of deist approach. They start to form in new shapes of their own, no longer needing a guiding hand. You're able to sit back and observe the rippling effects of your actions. You move your fingers through the waves of color and feel the dust move through your fingers. Brief moments of impact of the dust upon your skin spark and crackle with color and you feel the warmth of new stars upon your skin with every microscopic explosion. All you have are your creations and your body. You don't think you need anything else. The boundless voice returns reverberating through your mind and at the base of your skull. A faint smell of ozone wafts through your nose. So, you've decided to pay attention to me again. I have? You have ignored me since we last spoke. It wasn't on purpose? <laughs> I... Again, the juxtaposition of the divine and the mundane is amazing. Like, imagine God saying, like, you have been ignoring me for your entire life. And you respond, it wasn't on purpose. Oops. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's beautiful writing. This is beautiful writing. I would assume you would be more accustomed to this. No matter. Where is she? I know her body is here, but where is she? I'm sorry, I don't know, you say. Then you are useless to me. You frown. Well, that's kind of hard. Excuse me, do you need something, or are you just here for irritation's sake? Could you imagine a god calling you annoying? Frankly, I'm not even sure how I got here. One minute I was on the job, next I saw some weird vision thing, and now I'm, a uh, here. In the void. Talking to you. Fascinating. You have absolutely no idea how this works. Is this how you pilot the mech? Like, you dip yourself in acid? And you just start tripping? I think I might actually, you say. Oh? So perhaps you are accustomed to this after all. Not necessarily, you admit. I've never communed directly with my god, but some people at my temple have. I know that it's something strengthened by proximity, and I know that physical contact helps. Hmm. Does it? You nod, even though you're not sure the voice can see you. It does. Having a piece of divinity lets you tap into the same, let's say, channel as the god. Better yet, if you can touch the god themselves, but that's not typical. Do you know that you are literally taking apart my body? I am quite sure that it is considered touching. You feel your face heat, flushed with embarrassment. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, uh, to be fair, we didn't know that you were still alive. <laughs> I love how catty this god is. I'm here for it. Yes, yes, alive. We thought it had been long enough since you went down that there likely wouldn't be any survivors, and that, you know, we wouldn't be dissecting a god on their deathbed. How considerate of you. Though the voice speaks in monotone, it still manages to deliver such scathing sarcasm that you want to shrivel up and die of embarrassment. <laughs> I think I've been told that about my videos before. Regardless of how it starts, we have yet to find out another key part of the process. Yeah? What's that? What the conditions are for leaving? You finish, and just as you say the word, your surroundings melt back into place, the pressure in the air abating. The smell of ozone fades, and there's no booming monotone in your mind anymore. 
Well, seems the conversation's over. Love the cadence of the writing. Yeah, I, I'm sorry that I'm not delivering a ton of like witty quips. I'm just engrossed and I hope that's okay. You return to work. When you open your eyes again, your arms are clean and your blade sits in a puddle at your feet. The wound is wet, but not gushing like you remember it. You shake off thoughts of the conversation and focus on your efforts to harvest the muscle. You take a methodical approach, losing yourself in the motions of taking knife to muscle and sinew and discarding the flesh to the side. You know, just chuck it in the dirt. If you roll it in the dirt, it keeps it from sticking. <laughs> you leave the arm to deposit the freshly harvested muscle in a container branded with the Ikor Extractions Incorporated logo. The name of the company has never felt more ironic. This arm is mostly intact all the way down to its hand, but its weapon is nowhere to be found. Yeah, we've talked about this. Ooh, um, do we mine the bone? I'm curious, we haven't learned a whole lot about the bone. With the muscles removed, the bones sit lax on the ground surrounded by scraps. I wanna learn about the bone. Like, I wanna pick this option just to learn about the bone. The bones of the arm glow beneath the muscle, but exposed to the elements look dull and washed up. While peeling the muscle off of the bone, you were able to locate and expose the articular hatches needed to access the wires. Thanks to the armor's protection, the bones of this arm are in excellent shape, meaning the interior wires are preserved as well. Both the material of the bones and the wiring can be harvested and repurposed. One of the downsides of this arm being so well preserved, however, is that it'll take some effort to pry the articular hatches open to access the wires inside. Brute force will likely damage the bone, rend rendering it less valuable, but being more meticulous will take more time. We need to explore the chest. We don't got time. Brute force it. You get paid by the hour, not by how valuable your finds are. You find a blunt piece of metal and a sharp scrap to use as a chisel. You break the hatch open with the crack and the arm seems to spasm in place. You're knocked back by the recoil and fall on your back. When you sit up, all you see is an open hatch and scrap metal littered around. The mech had moved in response to your force. You're not strong enough to have moved an entire arm on your own. It had flinched. You find yourself in a great empty hall. The walls and ceiling around you are vaulted with harsh geometric beams, unforgiving in their angles while they ascend to meet each other. They're a gleaming white like polished marble or bleached bone, and from the corner of your eye you see something fall. A muted thud accompanies the fall. You look to the left. Ah, we're talking to the god again. Hey. So right choice, maybe. You look to the left to find a chunk of the vaulted ceiling have been fallen onto the floor, a cloud of dust floating in the wake of its descent. The air around you ripples from the impact. You hadn't noticed how stagnant it was before. You go over to it to investigate. It's a sizable piece, slightly larger than you. White light filters in through the new hole in the ceiling, illuminating particles of dust floating around you. The ceiling piece looks old and crumbled. It's a stark contrast to the polished floors and seamless walls. It's impossible to guess how old this place really is. You kneel slightly and run your hand along the fallen stone. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just remembering Richard Yancharsky touching the obelisk. You guys are... <laughs> It's coarse to the touch and powdery, lingering on your skin even after the contact ends. You are alone in this great empty hall. Everything is still save for the dust wafting around you. You hear a faint whispering whispering drifting in from above. Hello? Hello? Mr. Obama? Please don't harvest my flesh. The whispering grows in volume and deepens in pitch. The space is filled with this low chorus, a haunting imitation of what prayers could have sounded like when this space was last used. 
The sound originates from the hole in the ceiling, the breach in stone allowing a lone breeze to infiltrate the preserved stillness of the cathedral hall. Isn't it interesting that holy places are often called still? Maybe that's what's being invoked here. The idea of a holy place being a still place, and but the mech is motive. It moves. It's a moving holy place. Maybe I'm reading... <laughs> reading too much into it, but that dichotomy. This game um, is built on dichotomies. You look up at the ceiling, ignoring the gaping breach. The vaulted architecture is rigid and perfect in its symmetry. The geometry of the space is as imposing as it is impressive. The patterns do not feel decorative in nature. Instead, the harsh angles and the strict geometry feel as irrefutable as the laws of nature. White powder falls from the broken ceiling. Hairline fractures in the stone extend from the gap. Look. You stare through the gap in the ceiling. Light pours through the breach, warm and liquid gold. Your surroundings have never looked more artificial. What once looked polished and sublime now looks stale, devoid of life. The whispering chorus is drowned out by the sound of rock crumbling. The fractures have grown into full faults in the ceiling, and more chunks of the stone fall loose on the floor around you. Hug the stone! That part of the ceiling's already caved in! Well then again, according to statistical analysis, you shouldn't be standing where that stone fell, because that is where stones are liable to fall. The falling of that stone has proven it. <laughs> One falls just behind you, but, entranced by the glimpse of the sky, you don't even flinch. The colors of the sky are vibrant. One moment they appear a gentle blue, cotton soft and comforting. Another moment and the light of the sun glares through, bringing with it triumphant golds and reds that send vibrant streaks through the air. Your eyes burn from the aggressive bright light, and your skin feels warmer than it ever has. A great portion of the ceiling falls, just shy of the apex of the hall. It crashes to the ground unceremoniously, and the impact makes the ground shudder. The cracked ceiling disintegrates further. Look! The building continues to collapse around you, yet you feel no instinct to run to safety. You feel, you feel no need to move, no flight response activated. You stand, rooted in place, eyes lost in the sky above. Wake, yeah. The now familiar void melts into place, and a low hum in the back of your mind signals that it's time for another conversation. And so you return. Any thoughts as to what we shall discuss this time, before you are inevitably ripped from this void and returned to the material present? Well, I, I didn't prepare any talking points, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> I love this dialogue. A shame. I so long to hear more of your inane theories. You elect to ignore that, lest you say something extremely rude to a cosmic deity. Maybe I could ask you some questions instead, you offer. There's a long silence as the god mulls this over. <laughs> Eventually. Fine. If we are to be stuck together, ask away. I shall answer within reason. So this feels like more general information. This is like about the god himself. Maybe if we ask about his experience, we'll learn a little bit more. What do you, what do you remember? You asked. What happened to you? What do you want the pl What do you want the play-by-play -play of the past few millennia? You scowl. The god seems to enjoy being deliberately obtuse. No, I meant before the crash. You're in pieces now. No thanks to you. But fine. I suppose I can grant you that. How benevolent. There was a battle. It went wrong. Many people died. And I crashed. The end. 
Why did I even ask? Where are you from originally? Aside from the cosmic womb from whence all deities were created. Yes, aside from that. To be frank, I do not remember. I have been around for quite some time. Prior to the schism, even. The schism? Wait, is that... You mean, great divide between Norail and the Creator? You were there. Are you... related? Were you part of it? What? The progenitors. I am not a member of their family, no. Well, perhaps a distant cousin? Quite honestly, the family tree is a bit of a mess. <laughs> I love, I love this god. You stay silent. You're relatively dumbfounded at how casual this conversation is. You're discussing the actual literal creators of the universe as though they're shitty relatives. <laughs> it's bizarre. It also makes total sense. Seemingly unaware of your internal ex internal external crisis, the voice continues. But I ha but I had no role in their squabble. I was simply worshipped by unlucky people in the wrong place. What? You mean in Zera? Maybe. Maybe not. Like I said, I do not remember where I am from. But the bulk of my followers were based there, so over time it was home to me as well. And... Well... Pity the fool who dares tread upon the territory of the Creator. So, how did you get caught? Yeah, smaller, re smaller religions in Zera are usually really hard to track down or else their gods become cannon fodder. Yes, I am well aware. Holy shit. You go okay, so we're learning a bit more about this society. There are a bunch of... Oh, they're little religious sects that start worshipping gods, and then the gods are hunted down and their bodies made into machines of war. Oh, this is fucked. I'm here for this. In all likelihood, it was probably one of my believers who sold me out. Maybe someone was simply unlucky and got caught or all of them collectively decided that it was too much effort to preserve the faith. They could have decided I was no longer what they wanted. I do not know. It's so sad. Mm. This went off the rails and I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm like, I'm here for it. That's awful. Yes, it is. All I know is that now I am a broken weapon of Zyra's make. Know this. I do not begrudge my followers. But you must understand. I did not ask for things to be like this. Neither did they. I suppose you are right. The air thins. You see the void swimming in and out at the edge of your vision. I think we're out of time. You return to your surroundings and find yourself on your back, blunt metal in your hand. You slowly get back on your feet and approach the panel, arms held in front of you as though fending off a wild animal. Nothing else seems to have happened after, you, after the initial spasm, so it should be safe to get the wires and go. It seems wiser to unplug the wires rather than cutting them out, so you remove them as unobtrusively as possible before wrapping them in a coil and leaving. You find a rack to hang your wires on, and exit the area. Hey, Dabi. Hey, we get to talk to him. You approach Dabi. His hair is a, star is a stark white mop, and what little skin you can see is a hybrid of flesh tone and artificial blue plates. You see two pieces of metal fashioned like horns curve away from his forehead. Ah, the cyberpunk aesthetic. The sclera of his eyes are a deep red ringed with black. He raises a brow upon seeing you approach. Upon seeing you approach. Okay. 
Je Jen, Je Jenna, are you still here? Is Dev still in chat? Because if you are, I have a question. Oh, they took off? Oh, damn. Oh, they had to go. Um, oh, they left it. Oh, I missed it. I Okay, you, it's it's ironic that I was so... I was digging into their grain. Um, that Digging into their game that I missed them leave. <laughs> because I was going to say, did you intend to create, like, Tumblr fuel? Because that's what you just did here. You know that, right? If you're watching the VOD and, and you're listening, you know that you just created Tumblr fodder. We're continuing. <laughs> He's a Tumblr sexy man. He is. <laughs> you introduce yourself to him. He grins at you, his teeth a stark white against the raucous colors of his clothing. <clears throat> I'm Dubby, he says. It's a pleasure. Nice to meet you, too. I see you've also consigned yourself to the service of Our Lady of the Sacred Waste. What did you do before? I used to be a member of the clergy. He takes a step back from you, looking at you with mild alarm. Well, something must have gone wrong for you. You don't get many former priests around here. I wouldn't expect you to, no. Dabi makes a point to avoid eye contact with you now. He looks uncomfortable. And what brings you to such a fabulous, glamorous line of work such as this? <laughs> it's my calling. It's my calling, you say dryly. The lady demands her sacred waste, so who am I to deny her? <laughs> he laughs, delighted that you're keeping the joke running. Ah, another loyal acolyte. So glad to have another member of the cloth among us. What about you, you ask? A celebrity as infamous as myself has to retain some sort of privacy, you know. Best way to stay under the radar is to work the jobs people like to pretend don't exist. <laughs> oh, Hex Harper, thank you. I I'm glad you like Lauren. Lauren's a sweet boy. Wait, what, what are people talking about in chat? Oh, boy. Wait, did he, did he say the A word? Amogus. Celebrity, huh? You raise a brow. How come I've never heard of you? He raises the back of his hand to his forehead with a dramatic flourish. Oh, the horror to think that someone is blind to my shining legacy. You might want to be careful with how many jokes you take him up on. It seems like he's the type to take a mile if you give him the fraction of an inch. You might not be kidding. You reason. As dramatic as he seems to be, he made a genuine point about wanting to stay under the radar at a low-reward, high-risk job. He might not be a celebrity per se, but infamy is a different kind of fame. Plenty of people probably come to this line of work to escape something. Maybe he's escaping something big. Anyway, not that I wouldn't take any excuse to learn more about a fascinating specimen such as yourself, but our illustrious supervisor is not the most keen on us lowly, lowly peons slacking off. Let me know if you need anything else, yeah. He gives you a jaunty salute as he heads back to his work. Oh. Ah? Uh? Let's talk to Orion for a minute. You know what? Let's see. Let's not ask him about his time serving. Let's ask him about to be. Hey, Ryan. What do you want? He asks with a raised brow. What do you know about to be? He seems... Odd, you say carefully. I was wondering if you knew much about him. He blinks at you placidly before giving an overly fake smile. I have nothing to say about that freak. He says with false cheer, stepping past you. That's an extreme reaction, you say. What did he do to warrant it? He looks at you incredulously. Do you even have to ask? Just look at it. Debbie's not human, no matter how much skin it wears. You're saying he's an android, you, you say incredulously. Are you sure it's not just some super tricked out augmentations? Cybernetic enhancements are expensive, but far from uncommon. 
The feasibility of androids, on the other hand, has been the source of heated debate for years. He nods. Listen, I may not have been a mech pilot, but I spent a lot of time with them. I remember hearing them talk about Intel held the talk about intel that suggested that those empire freaks were researching pilotless mechs. No human behind the wheel, no ghost in the machine, just straight up autonomous sentient robots. Are you sure you should be telling me this? You ask doubtfully. If he's telling the truth, he basically just leaked top secret information to you. But you're not even sure he's right. Orion freezes. You sigh. <laughs> So you're certain, you ask, changing the subject. He perks up at the chance to monologue again. 100% positive. There's no other explanation for it. Well, there's the possibility that you're just being an asshole to someone for no reason. <laughs> I, I really appreciate the frankness of these characters. He glares at you. The Empire built itself on, an un on unholy machines and worship of the wrong things. That thing is just a natural conclusion. I wouldn't go that far, you say sharply. Of course you wouldn't. You're as delusional as the people who made it. He shakes his head almost pityingly. Orion shrugs, smiling patronizingly. Don't overthink it. Some things aren't meant to exist. To be is one of them. He pats you on the shoulder, condescension dripping from his tone. You're still new here. So you had no way of knowing, but you'll see soon enough. You go back to work. Oh, supervisor. Um, let's just talk to them while we're here. Ask your supervisor. Hey, do you have any advice for me? Make sure you rinse with bleach while you drink pus. What? Thanks, Maya. Oh, uh, I, we didn't get to the chest because we were too busy talking to people. You and the team reconvene at the shuttle. As you gather, your supervisor speaks into her headset while tallying the inventory on her visor's interface. And that's all from this site. Yep. Mm-hmm, she says, her tone clipped and formal. Right, we're heading out now. There'll be a full report by the end of the day. She taps her headset and hangs up. She looks at you and the crew for a moment before speaking. All right. Oh. All right, we're done here. So much as, so move as much shit to the cargo hold as you can on your own. Anything too heavy for you will be rounded up along with the vehicles and equipment at the end. Anything you leave behind is not the responsibility of Icor Inc. And it's up to you to manage your personal effects. Any questions? But the, when the crew shakes their heads, she gives a brisk nod. Right. On with it, then. Sooner we finish, the sooner we leave. You and the crew ma make descent work. Decent descent. Make decent work of the equipment. Maya and Spades guide the larger vehicles to the cargo hold of the shuttle, but they practiced ease. Once Maya sees that everything has been boarded, she checks her visor and says, T minus 10 to lift off. We will leave you behind if you aren't strapped in by them. Your supervisor boards the shuttle without a spare glance behind her. Let's let's talk to Debi. Debi lingers at the edge of the wreckage, searching for something one last time. He doesn't seem to find it. Debi boards the shuttle. Orion surveys the wreckage with an air of nostalgia to him. He almost looks sad to be leaving. After getting his fill of the scenery, he's the next to board the shuttle. He offers you a nod and, and a beam as he passes you. You catch sight of spades ne kneeling near the edge of the wreckage before they quickly stand and dust off their pants. They board the shuttle without meeting anyone's gaze. You board the shuttle. I think we're at the I think we're at the end, you guys. Dubby <laughs> Saving Dubbies With everyone boarded, Maya signals an affirmative to the shuttle pilot. The shuttle lifts off, and you watch until the body on the ground becomes nothing more than a speck in the distance. That was fascinating, and I absolutely want to return to it. I, like, I'm, I'm gonna do some more runs on, on my own time, you know, whenever I have time. 
Um, not today, probably. But that was fantastic. Um, stream's not done, by the way. Uh, just because we're done with the game, that doesn't mean that we're done with the stream. Actually, we're going to be doing a couple of things. Um, one thing is... Uh, Farfetched. I, I don't know if you guys saw it. It's the uh, animated project being uh, headed up. I, I think that Ashley Nichols is heading it up. Um, I got to know her actually, like over the last few months. I've been chatting with her, and uh, we're going to be we're going to be looking at um, at the pilot that just launched. She actually um, offered to let me see it early, but I I wanted to have a um, a genuine reaction. So we're going to look at that in just a minute. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me for checking out uh, That Which Faith Demands. This is this is a very interesting game. I love it as a short story. Um, again, uh, Timothy, do you have the link? Because this game is on sale for the next like seven hours, and it's two. It's like two bucks twenty. It's two bucks. <laughs> it's. It's quite cheap, so if you want to try it out for yourself and uh, make your own decisions in it and explore it, um, I, I would encourage you to. Because I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, this was this was their senior thesis. And they, like, it, it's very good. Very good senior thesis. <laughs> All right. We'll be back in just a few minutes, everyone. And actually, we are going to exit the game. Exit the asshole. <laughs> now, we're um, we're going to be back in just a few minutes. But now it is time for all of you to get up, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, get yourself a sippy, and report back in a few minutes uh, about what you nab to hydrate yourself. See you all in just a minute.
Welcome back. Now, what did you all get for Sippy? I personally wanted something with a decently strong flavor, but something that was comforting. So I'm having um, my milk oolong that uh, from Asthete Tea that, that I quite enjoy. What are you all sipping? Mead and sparkling water. Man, oh, now, now I want mead. Damn it. Meat is so good. A cup of sand. Perfect. Cle clean out your insides, I, I guess. Water. Rubos. Sparkling water. A chai latte. Coca-Cola. <laughs> Gatorade. Tap water. Spurt. <laughs> now, thank you all for joining me to check out uh, That Which Faith Demands. I've been very excited for that. And uh, it, it didn't disappoint. Very nice. It, it had really big short story energy. And, and I'm completely there for it. I mean, any, any day where I get to read some strange and interesting um, science fiction is is a good day in my book very like very solid it, it had it had big um like so, something you'd read in a short story collection that just kind of sits in your head for a while that's definitely going to that it's going to do that for a while for me all right i think you know, I'm just kind of realizing you can talk with the other members of the team and get to know them a little bit, but there, like, I, I, f I feel like there was a hidden, uh, a hidden option. You could, like, basically when you're harvesting the mech, you get to talk to it, right? <laughs> so he's just another conversation option. Now, we are going to be looking at a thing. Um, Farfetch's new trailer just dropped, and I want to check that out with all of you. So, do, do. It's a minute and a half long. Okay. Not too long. We're gonna... Oh, we still need to read the After Man books with Mike. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Saw this post the other day. Sci-fi short stories are super efficient. They take an hour or so to read and then fuck you up for years. <laughs> oh, that is accurate. All right. You guys ready to check this out? I'm going in blind. I'm just laying the breadcrumbs for when we make it big. Isn't that right, Rue? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Everyone loves a good origin story, right? Yeah, and they usually start with hard work. So make yourself useful. Hey, Quinn! <laughs> Wedding party or desecrated corpse? Oh, <laughs> dude calls. Think fast! <laughs> Coming, Piper! Uh, typical. Only way you bother this is really cute so far. Oh, that's sick. Sorry. I guess they don't make trees like they used to. Uh. Oh, right. People, this is our lead singer and lighting expert. None of you say a fucking word. <laughs> huh, lighting expert. You hear that, Kira? I got a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Full pilot coming before we die. <laughs> This is awesome. So th this is a um, 
an independent animated series that's being uh, that's being made that I'm I'm looking forward to. That just launched. Let me see. Um, they have yeah that that pilot was uploaded onto a um, a new channel, but there is a little bit more uh, a, a test animation that was made a while ago. Um, no, it's not voiced by me. Um, <laughs> that look that does look really cool. Ashley, if you are here, that 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 is looking awesome. Do we have Dev in chat? No, that, that looks absolutely sick. I'm definitely... Oh, you are here. Hello. It, it looks fantastic. Yeah, guys, we have Dev in chat. We have a couple devs in chat. Devin's in chat. <laughs> fantastic work. It, it's looking, it's looking fantastic. Yeah, and the humor works. Wow, that's like, I feel like that's hard to pull off. It works. No, it's it's coming together really well. Two thumbs up. It, it's, it's really nice to see things coming together. I know you've been working like crazy on this. You're always terrified of people not laughing. <laughs> No, it definitely works. It, it's very, like, it fits. The tone is perfect. I feel, I the vibe is really strong. <clears throat> Voice crack. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. That Thanks so much for uh, letting me share it with everyone. Considering my name is Devin and I just got here. <laughs> it's Okay, for those who don't know, Devin chat is, like, it, it's a joke, right? Because the if the dev of a game is in chat while you're playing it, that's happened twice today. Um, we had the dev of um, that which faith demands in chat, and now we have um, Ashley Nichols, the dev of <laughs> dev, quote unquote, um, with the project lead. What do you call yourself precisely um, on the project? Like, what what title did you take for it? She has the twink character design down. <laughs> That's why I told you all to shut up. <laughs> Don't say a word. Yet yeah, they're their lead singer and lighting expert. Creator, I guess. Rabbit nerd is my preferred title. No, don't. No, that's me. Don't you take that from me. <laughs> Oh man, I just realized, like, if I ever stream Inscription again, I'm just going to have to take the Warrens every time, right? Gonna steal it from me? Don't, you, you don't better fucking, don't you do this shit. <laughs> no, we have, don't worry guys, we have plenty to fill up. So we're going to go for another 20 minutes and then we have art. We have a lot of art. I feel like... I I feel like I need to very purposefully make time for art nowadays because there's always so much because people are just way too sweet. Let me see. I had a I had a few things. I have a classic Tumblr post that I wanted to share with everyone that I thought you all would appreciate. Oh, the Warrens? Yeah, I'm a little like again, I'm I'm so busy. I have so little time for anything but the few but like the the few projects that I have because the projects I have take are time consuming. We still want to do it. We still have the topic. I would be doing the topic on stream if we weren't doing it for the Warrens. <laughs> so, are you all ready for an absolutely classic Tumblr post? There's amazing is it pre-ban? I think so. So first, doctor, $140,000 a year. Furry artist on Patreon, $160,000 a year. 
I think you're lowballing the furry art amount, to be honest. I'm sorry for the inaccuracies, Dr. Yiff. <laughs> no matter how I respond to this, I don't look good. Well played. I walked right into that. Then Booba Chew. Why do we have so many chews? Well, furry artists are typically more competent and courteous than your average doctor, so I can see that. Did you just legitimately tell me that a person who draws wolf ass is more confident than a dude who spent 8 plus years in a university to give you a lung transplant? Doctors are bullshit and furry artists perform an infinitely more valuable service to society compared to them. <laughs> you will die in 7 days. It took doctors like 10 years to diagnose what was wrong with me, some insisting I was faking for attention while a furry artist I knew just went, that sounds like Crohn's after hearing me complain once and ended up being right. Also, I can't go to a doctor and ask them to draw Rouge the Bat wider than she is tall with tits to match, now can I? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Ashley. Thanks thanks for stopping by. Also, sup, Lucky Bun. You could if you weren't a fucking coward. <laughs> this post was like 50 consecutive punches to the face. What the fuck went on here? <laughs> God. Ah, I love this. Perfection. <laughs> God, I have I have a bunch of stuff uh, to show. Let me see. Oh yeah, um, did you all hear that Jordan Peterson is going to be speaking at a Bitcoin conference? And <laughs> this got shared with me. Uh, yeah, we have actually we have a few little pieces of um, of crypto news. So Jordan Peterson announced as speaker for a Bitcoin conference and the R... Oh, what? Oh, I didn't... Mm. Mm. Hold on a second. I know how to fix this. So I'm going to copy, but this time I'm going to remove this and I'm going to paste a duplicate. So now, if I change one, the other will always be the... Why isn't it working? What? Oh my god, okay, I get why. Well, we're fine. I fixed it. Jordan Peterson has been confirmed as a speaker at the 2022 Bitcoin conference. I've actually considered getting out of crypto because of this shit. If it's the new all right currency, they can keep it. Absolutely. And look, we're not going to uh, like, okay, here. Jordan Peterson has been confirmed as a speaker at the 2022 Bitcoin conference. Is this a shit post? I don't think so. And look, we're not going to have an argument about whether about like where Jordan Peterson falls on on the political spectrum. We're here to clown. I've actually considered getting out of crypto because of this shit. Absolutely, and this sub has turned into an astroturfing haven for alt right bullshit reeks of the Russian trolls. Great, we've got Ted Cruz and Jordan Peterson next. Let's get Alex Jones on our side. Really try and get Bitcoin adopted by the most controversial people possible. That'll help convince everyone. So, the subreddit is just going crazy. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just the infighting. I'm, I'm not here for the politics, baby. I'm here for the infighting. <laughs> oh, dear. Music? Oh, okay, good. Music's fine. Oh, I... It's just... It's the fact that they're infighting so hard. They just... They can't help it. Get the popcorn. There are some other things that I want to look at, of course. Um, now, there's another thing I wanted to talk about that is really important... Uh, that is important in the crypto space. Um... 
it looks like, and it, it's hard to tell precisely what happened, but OpenSea is in a little bit of trouble. Different accounts have given different amounts, but apparently a bunch of NFTs were stolen from people uh, when OpenSea decided to do a transfer. Now, so, like, apparently it's because there was a phishing scam on. Yeah, all my apes are gone. Um, I, I, I wish there was a soundboard for that. Maybe, maybe I should get a voice actor to... <laughs> <laughs> to record all my apes are gone so I can hit it on my stream deck. Now, apparently, um, they were migrating over. Um, I, I think that they were changing their smart contracts. And so they sent out emails to people letting them know. But someone made an email uh, with a link attached that basically uh, got them to sign a smart contract, which gave them uh, control over the smart wallet. Insert, insert Muda, yeah, <laughs> right. Now, apparently they stole a bunch of NFTs. Now, the funny thing about this is that the CEO of OpenSea went into damage control and said, Importantly, rumors that this was a $200 million hack are false. The attacker has $1.7 million of Ethereum in his wallet from selling some of the stolen NFTs. The discrepancy here is that the dude stole NFTs that people were valuing at $200 million, Meaning that like this is what they have been sold at auction or pe what people thought they could be bought for. And this person managed to sell 1.7 million. So this dude is basically uh, damage controlling and saying, no, no, no. Like, he's sold 1.7 million of them. He, he only sold 1.7 million. In my mind, that's kind of like saying that, um, like, let's, let's suppose, right? Let's suppose for a minute that somebody breaks into a museum and steals 10 paintings worth over a worth over a hundred million dollars. And like all like each one of them is worth, you know, millions. And then the museum curator gets up on a podium and you know, people are saying, you know, one hundred million dollars worth of paintings stolen. Um, then the museum curator gets up and says, actually, they've only sold one of the paintings. So it's only like 10 million right now. <laughs> It's like, you motherfucker. <laughs> the spin. The spin is so hard. Like, if, if I'm wrong on that account, please let me know. But there's a huge list. Like, it's like... He, He's trying to say, oh, we only sold some of them. So what is the op is the founder of OpenSea trying like is, is the founder of OpenSea trying to say, oh, like only the NFTs that he sold count? Um, or is he trying to say the ones that he didn't sell were actually worthless anyway? <laughs> They know, they know it's a grift. They all know they're in on it. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, um, it's like, oh yeah, we, we have feelers out in the black market and uh, they're <laughs> the only... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind that, like, his defense is, oh, he only sold $1.7 million worth of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he managed to throw all of those into tornado cash, so he got away with it. Like, the, the dude who sold them all absolutely got away with the heist. Yeah, Lucky Bun, uh, the big problem with crypto scams is that you can only get away with cryptocurrency and good luck figuring, uh, funging that into something worthwhile. Yeah, a good, good luck um, exchanging that for money. I mean, 
Are there any other, like, what other stable coins are being used right now to trade? Uh, because I know that Tether, like, are they still using Tether? Are, are Crypto Bros still using Tether? Does anyone know? People are still using Tether? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? People are still using Tether. Oh, it's still on all the major listings. Are you shitting me? You, no way, no way, no way. <laughs> Oh, the crypto scene is even stupider than I thought. Tether bad. Tether, the, the, the New York Attorney General has come out saying that there's evidence that shows that it's not actually a stable coin because the coins aren't backed one to one like they say they are. And they're printing billions of dollars worth of tethers and just saying, yeah, each of these is still worth a dollar. Ah. <sighs> I, I don't want to show the video again because we spent like a, like most of a stream watching um, CoffeeZilla's video on Tether. But basically, Tether is used to exchange... Oh, sorry. I'm adjusting myself. Tether is used to exchange cryptocurrency for um, normal fiat currency. And... It turn like the the way that it works is that each tether is worth exactly one dollar because it is like they say oh yeah for every tether that we have we also have one dollar in the bank. Um, but there is evidence that suggests that like some very very big evidence that suggests that they don't have the money. Um, go look up Coffeezilla's video on tether. But the long and short of it is tether is being run by people who are known for scams on top of all of this and the the paper on the back end shows that they they aren't backed one to one so but people are still using tether as a stable coin i cannot believe that they're still i'm sorry my mind is blown i i had to assume that people would just migrate away from tether but they didn't. I'm... It's like... It's like they all have to believe that it is stable. Yeah, Tether is essentially printing more money than they advertise they have. Yeah, that, that it... Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, we, nobody can say for certain because it hasn't gone to court. But the evidence suggests... Uh, the evidence that we have is very... Hmm... Orc power of believe. <laughs> it's... I am absolutely flabbergasted that Tether is still being used as a stablecoin. It's like... I, Tether is the main way that at least was, and apparently still is... Um, the main way that people cash out of crypto. And we don't know how much longer they'll be around. Oh, Lucky Buns here with the info. The problem with withdrawing Ethereum is that you need to sell them to people who are buying in real money and also pay gas prices. Yeah. Gas, 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 gas. Back in the day, it's like gas, gas, gas. Uh, selling that amount also reduces scarcity, which can tank the value of the whole currency before the transaction completes just because of the size. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky Bun's correct. Um, the like Selling large amounts of cryptocurrency can actually adjust the value of the currency as you are selling it, which is why Tether is um, used, which is why stablecoins are used in the first place, because you can peg it to um the actual dollar amount no matter how the currency fluctuates um no matter and no matter how long the transaction takes to go through oh we, we talked about the made off coin rug pull last time on saturday oh so 
Uh, one thing before we do, uh, lo- it star shard lucky bun. No, e- like all of you, all of you. I need a, I need a horny bat. God damn it. <laughs> Ice Thunder, hello, you are valid. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I just pretend I am. Bonk. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> just use teeth, you gits. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's coming to be that time. I think it's time for us to look at art. And we have quite a bit. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, we're going to start. Let's see, that's time cube math. Looked at that. Here we go. So first we've got a piece from Farah. I'm going to be on the right. And... <laughs> oh no. That game generated much art. Yeah. Farah says a Lauren drawing to celebrate Fred's amazing talent for impressions, at least as long as they as their Gollum, Kermit, or JFK. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Jordan Peterson, and I'm here to tell you about Time Cube. <laughs> Thank you very much, Farah. Perfect. And then Farah also here uh, to describe my experience uh, listening to Brian's poop songs in the morning, or specifically toilet songs. Like, so to those who don't know, I, for a very long time, I would wake up and have voice messages from uh, Brian of regular car reviews, and they would just be songs that he was singing on the toilet. I said, so this is an accurate uh, account of it. Oh, new voice message. My sphincter is a union man. He only works when conditions are right. <laughs> God damn it, Brian. <laughs> I, w- for a very long time, for months, I would wake up to like at least one of these in the morning. Ugh. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you, Farah. <laughs> Good poster, by the way. And now we have Ika Pika. I was a flesh goddess of a circuit cult. So we saw an, a different version of this. I was a flesh goddess of a circuit cult from another world, but now work 9 to 5 as unreal estate agent Harpy. Issue 2. Odds issue two. Chain axe. Who in the ever living, ever loving motherfucking cock biscuit stole my chain axe? <laughs> so this is corn. Oh no. We borrow your chain. Was it <laughs> chain dildo? Lamau ubu. <laughs> Kill them. <laughs> Run, bitch. <laughs> so this is a 40k reference second volumes already out yeah working like crazy thank you so much Ika Pika corn 420 blaze my 360 elite vagic <laughs> featuring Lawrence Sama. <laughs> thank you Ika Pika it's beautiful Oh, this is good. Ika Pika with some more good memes. Uh, this one's actually for Kirpe. You should absolutely um, tag... Uh, you, you should tag Kirpe in this. Look, Foxhole, Persistent World Warfare. Curator review, not recommended. This game is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Poor Kirpy gay boy. Poor gay boy. Poor gay boy. <laughs> he just wants boys. <laughs> Thank you. And we have we have more memes. <laughs> A Nord's last thought should be of Bean. <laughs> A Nord's last thought should be of his homeland. 
Good. Thank you, Ika Pika, for, I think, mm. <laughs> And Story Feathers is back with another collage. This one, actually, I don't think uh, we need the details. The detail ones for this one. But check this out. Bonk. <laughs> Mech's God's Sadness Philosophy Owls plus Good Demon Dogs. So we have acquire meat, muscle, sinew. Nerd is what boring people call interesting people. <laughs> oh my god, Lucky Bun, stop. <laughs> you ignored me, whoops. <laughs> Hello, Mr. God. Mecca plus bean, it's, it's a mecha bean, good. Happy birthday, Jen. Yeah, I know you're not here anymore, but happy birthday. And then we have Lauren version of the destroyed mech. <laughs> Tumblr fodder Lauren. Figured I'd make one eventually. I did lurk there for years. <laughs> oh my god. And of course, Pop God Bubbles. Talon for the D-Gens. The lot of you are degenerate just for watching my streams. But that's okay. I think I care about you anyway. Me still got. We've got a little bit more from Farah as well. I can't take you anywhere. Memes, come, linguistic misdirection. <laughs> This happened, this happened live when I was playing Mario Kart with, um, uh, Rev and Hugbees and Mike. You guys remember? Uh, I think, was it, was it Rev? I think it was Hugbees. It was Andrew that said, um, I said ad infinitum and then either one of them or someone in chat said ad infinitum and it's like, no, it's ad infinitum and people, and then I literally looked it up in the Merriam-Webster dictionary and got the pronunciation. And I was like, yeah, there, see? They were like, no. No. They just... They just went, no. Fuck off. That was Mike going ham just to rile me up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm a... Yeah, Lucky Bun remembers. I'm a crypto DJ with a crush for crypto... Like, with... Is, is it a crush for crypto kitties? What the hell are crypto kitties? Captain Lauren's oops all beans. Sweetened bean and bean cereal. It's all just be it's beans all the way down. <laughs> oh dear. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Farah. And then aw. And Mintelect. Aw, oh, Mintelect. This is way too sweet. We just... It's a me. It's just a me. And also a Lauren. <laughs> Itty bitty Lauren. Aw, oh, this, this is so sweet, Mintelect. Thank you so much. I appreciate, like, all of the different personas that I have at this point. Like, there's me. There's me with rabbit ears. There's rabbit me. There's what out like there's lauren there's fred owl so there are multiple owls and then there's the owl icon um then there's the shark i made after the furries episode um like there's there's too many <laughs> okay that's not true i i i appreciate all of it i love all of it no thank you so much mintelect i love it i think that concludes art we we got in there with with enough time Oh, we have another. Uh, okay, uh, should I show this on stream, Ika Pika? It came late. You say it's like work in progress for next stream. What do you, Ika, what do you think, Ika Pika? Mind if I show this off? Because this is looking rad. I'm loving this already. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so this is of the gang. 
it's a work in progress of the gang. We have Jay Chan, we have Lauren Chan, we've got Rev, and we got Limes. All of us are just going to ruin everything in space and everything is going to go wrong. <laughs> Count Viscount, um, there, like, once I get partner, the, uh, the VODs will stick around for two months. I, I haven't heard back about partner yet, by the way. Should be hearing about that soon. It's been a little over a week, and they usually get back within two weeks. That's what I heard. Hopefully, they didn't lose my application. That would be nice. No, I, I love this. Thank you so much, Ika Pika. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the final version. Wait. Phi count? Hmm? What's pronounced? Phi count? What did I say? What did I say? Oh, it's Vi count. Oh, small brain. Small brain. <laughs> Another one of those words that I've only ever read. I will choose to believe chat on this one. I think that's... So I think that for real is everything now. If So if you want to submit art, uh, do it on the Lauren Owl Friend Twitter, which is down in the description. Uh, if you want to check that out and follow for when uh, stream goes live and uh, what I'm up to sometimes. I'm not super active on Twitter on any of my um, any of my accounts. That just means that you won't get spammed. Perfect. <laughs> Everyone wins. There is one hidden art. What do you mean? What do you mean hidden art? Explain. Explain yourself. Secret art? How dare you? <laughs> the hidden art is the art of beaning. With the at on their reply. Bonus bean art. Wait, what? The hidden at where? Where? I'm, I'm trying to locate what you're talking about. The at on their reply. Whose reply? This is, this is getting difficult to follow. Fetal juice. Oh. Uh... Okay, here, let me, let me see if I can find it. One moment. Okay, there we go. Oh, look at this. Fetal juice made... <laughs> a fucking name. Fetal juice made a piece of art as well. Check this out. This is beautiful. I, I love this. I love the I love the fluff the way you um, use the colors as well to to make that um, that brown tone. Fantastic! Thank you so much, Fetal Juice. Him stare. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Not um, I'm not a hundred percent on what we're going to be doing on Thursday, but Saturday. Uh, we should be doing Pulsar as long as everything goes well. And actually, I took time to talk with uh, to talk with everyone about what we're going to do. We're going to be streaming from two perspectives. It's going to be from my perspective and Limes's perspective. And Limes is going to be doing um, science. She decided to call that. She's going to be a science ferret. Science ferret. That's about it. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I need to get to work. 
I've got quite a bit to do today. But I will see all of you again Thursday, as long as all goes well. Um, I'm still figuring out what to do. We might actually go back to the Final Fantasy house um, and keep reading the website. That is one thing that I'm considering. But I really wanted to jump on That Which Faith Demands today because it was on sale. Um, again, go and grab it. Not sponsored. Just, it's a good game. Thumbs up. So. Now, we need to figure out... Oh! Limes is streaming. Perfect. We're going to go ahead and raid Limes. Show some appreciation. Um, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do... Uh, bearer seek seek meet. That's going to be our raid message. Perfect. Okay, it's working. Well, I'll see you all Thursday. Uh, I don't have terribly much else. Yeah. <laughs> just waiting on partner now. And Saturday is going to be Pulsar. And I'm just really, really looking forward to that. All right. Bye, everyone.